Alright, I'm a resident of Collinwood. I'm here with Daniel Culver Killenberg. <laughs> here to discuss the Dragon Ball universe. So I gotta hit you with a hard question right away, man. If they do another Dragon Ball live action movie, do you want Akira Toriyama to write it? Actually, I'm glad you asked me that, because honestly, I think he should. However, um, I don't know. Does he know English, or do you not know? I'm, I mean, I know he's the executive. You know, I'm going to assume he does, since he was an executive producer for the other movie, yeah. I remember on, um, not Dragon Ball Evolution, but Ghost in the Shell, the guy that does Ghost in the Shell, they usually have translators, so... I mean, you wouldn't think that would be a problem either way. Well, that's true. That's what I was thinking. Of. They'd probably just, like, get someone who knows it, because... And I know, I know someone who knows Japanese. For those, for those that don't know, you can go on the internet and, you know, you know, find lessons and stuff. Well, I mean, that's not the best way, but I'm just saying it's possible, you know? Yeah, every, listen, everything is accessible through the internet. <laughs> oh, shit. But I do want a Toriyama to at least listen. This can't be evolution. You 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 know this, and I know this. That this if they do they get oh, yeah. another live action up, <laughs> it can't be evolution. It, it can't be what evolution was. They gotta a Toriyama being like a I forget what was he executive producer a part, but he wasn't really. They didn't listen to yeah. him. So. Yeah, yeah, you're actually right. He was an executive producer, but yeah, that's that's also right. Unfortunately, they didn't listen to him. I don't get why, but you know. <laughs> you you brought the creator of the show on board not to listen to him. That's it's one of the most like mind-boggling things I've seen from a like a film standpoint where you and I. I mean, here's the thing too. People think you and I bury evolution. Akira Toriyama buries it like a motherfucker, you know? That's true. I remember he even said, like, it was, it, um, it's not even Dragon Ball. And I think he actually said that before they even released it, but I could be wrong. Why don't you think they listen to him? I mean... Honestly, I hate to say it, but I think it's because he's probably criticizing their ideas, but their ideas were bad, so, you know, kind of makes sense that cr he criticized it. Uh, here's the thing, though, too. I mean, he he did, he's pretty much wrote every bit of Dragon Ball other than the movie, really, and GT. And he loved GT, I mean, so. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, that's true. Uh, One thing I should let people know about that don't know, he didn't write GT, but he did do the, the he did do the designs for GT. Right. Do you think they let him know what the storyboard was gonna be? Oh, you mean with uh, GT? Yeah. Um, I think they probably did. Okay. So help me out, man. What do you? Uh, let, let's say they. Akira Toriyama doesn't want to, I can't see him saying no to writing a live action one. But let's say hypothetically he does. <laughs> because, I mean, to be fair to him, they sort of did dick him over. You know what I mean? With the last one. <sighs> so I could see him... Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, like, not trusting that, them. So... If he says no, but they, I mean, they have the film, you know, the film rights. Who would, would you want them to get? Oh, man, that's actually a question. Oh, by the way, if you're talking about the movie with the storyboard thing, I don't, they might have let him see it, but now with this, I don't know with the director, because I don't know, like, you know, because there's, I don't know who could do it, like, because I know there's, like, a lot of actors who do like Dragon Ball, but, you know, I don't know how many of them would actually w would be willing to write it, you know. I I'm going to spot a name, and I'm, I'm going to say Sean Schimmel. It's simply for the fact, uh, now, y'all know, you know who he is, but 
for those who don't know, he voices Goku. Oh, yeah. He does some directing, and okay. I think he would be pretty good for directing a Dragon Ball movie. Now, for the... And actually, what a lot of people might also know is Sean Schimmel actually um, plays King Kai, too. Yep. I know that. I was... I actually found out today he voices... Uh, Leonardo for the Ninja Turtles show on Nickelodeon because my son watches it, but <laughs> I seen his I seen his name pop up up today. I was like, huh? <laughs> really? It's a small world. That'd be a cool idea, actually. Um. Also, you know the people who wrote GT. I know some people aren't gonna like this, but I wouldn't mind if they wrote it. If Tori almost said no. I wouldn't either. We both enjoy GT. I think if GT... I'll say this. We're super... I haven't watched one bit of Super just because I don't have the time to watch it. And I wish I did. I watch two shows on television and that's it. And it's like I have to record them to catch them. But where Super is more getting accepted by today's fans, I'll say, even like the older generation... GT was not. Yeah, that's true. Um, I could, I could actually see, um, I know people are going to say, well, he's an actor, but Jackie Chan, you know, because he knows a lot about, and I know people don't, for those that don't know, um, Dragon Ball actually was inspired by Chinese mythology, um, during the West, specifically, and since Jackie Chan being from China, he might actually relate to that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> do you, oh shit. Do you um if if they could get here's the thing too before I ask him the question Jackie Chan does do a lot of behind the scenes work as well so he wouldn't be a bad suggestion. Yeah, that's true. And let's be honest, he's not getting younger. But then again, they could all, like we were saying they could do the Jackie Chan thing since ja Jackie Chan for those that didn't hear other discussions. And just plain don't know, Jackie Chan's name is not a coincidence. Akira Torama was actually referencing Jackie Chan. <laughs> I know. When me and my brother first heard that, Daniel, we laughed our ass off because we knew right who he was referencing. <laughs> yeah. And um, actually, I don't... And since he's, like, older, he could be a good, um, Master Roshi, you know? I'm not saying he's, like, old, but, you know... Of course, you know, they could do that with makeup anyway, you know? He, he's not enough he's not he's definitely i think he they could definitely pull it off with him i'm not now i'm not saying chow yun fat uh did a bad job really but he wasn't really i don't know i thought when they casted him they would age him a lot more and they didn't see that's what's weird about evolution as well because he looks like roshi when roshi was young that's what's weird about it it's funny you say that because so I, I, it might have been my brother. It might have been one of my brother's friends. They thought, one of them thought it was a maybe a prequel. Would that have made more sense? You know, I guess it would. Like, I don't even know. Like, you know, I actually thought about the other day. Why is it even called Evolution? It doesn't even, the name doesn't really make sense either, you know. Right. No, uh, shit. It, I don't know. Like, I know they're doing. Actually, with the um, if they did a prequel, I guess it would kind of make sense with the whole like Piccolo's two thousand years old thing they were doing. Yeah. I I feel like if they were if they were gonna do this right, a prequel would have been better off, and them not do Goku right away. But they they. Oh, do there you go. You, you know what I mean? Like, do the do the Roshi... Explain how Roshi, you know, defeated Piccolo to, like, put him in that jar. You know what I mean? Like, from a live action... Yeah, people... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I don't know if you picked this up... Oh, it's fine. Oh, I don't know if you picked this up with Evolution, but, um... When I said Piccolo, they said Piccolo stopped, you know, 2000. That would make sense... 
if they didn't also try to say Goku was that age too. I don't know if you caught that, but they were like, oh, it was almost his um, disciple, you know. <laughs> I did not catch that. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. The headache that is that movie is... Uh, now, now, it's weird, though, is the jar thing did actually happen in the anime, but believe it or not, in the anime, it was a rice cooker. Oh, wow. What would you say is the biggest, like... Explain to me Dragon Ball Super from the beginning, if you can. Um, actually, what's weird is you might, I, I probably already told you this before, but the, the first two arcs are actually, um, retellings of the more recent Dragon Ball Z movies, um, Resurrection of Death and, um, what's the other one called? Um, Battle of Gods, but it's actually, in the, I actually said in the opposite order, it's, it's actually supposed to be Battle of Gods, then Resurrection of Death, but then, like, they kind of went off, like, then they did, like, tournaments and stuff, I don't know, they kind of... And now there's, like, another turn. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, now they say he's, like, a Super Saiyan God, and now they're Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, but shortened to um, Super Saiyan Blue because it's because of the color. Now, they start um, this on Earth or no? Oh, uh, actually, they do. Um, oh, wow. Because, like, it, like, takes place at the Boo Boo arc, you know? But it takes place before the time skip, so, like, Goten and Trunks are still kids, for example. Okay, okay. And they're barely used now. <laughs> uh. Which is really annoying, because people... Because that's one of the complaints about GT, because they're like, oh, well, no, Goten and Trunks didn't matter, but it's like, actually, Goten isn't even seen very much anymore. And when he is seen, his mom makes him study now. She, like, doesn't let him fight or anything, and he won't even train so basically they took Goten and sort of like like I just you know this on Facebook I've been watching Dragon Ball going back and watching Dragon Ball Z and I messaged you and I said well Piccolo was a dick to Gohan Gohan was like Chi Chi made Gohan study so they're sort of doing Goten like Gohan yeah that's true and that's weird though is they also brought back Future Trunks that was cool but what's weird is um Current Trunks still has purple hair, but Future Trunks has blue hair, but they don't explain why. Is... So Future... Like, they don't explain that at all? Yeah, they just... And it's even weirder because Bulma, like, he crashes and Bulma um, even says, does wait, does he have blue hair? So she knew somehow, so I don't... But supposedly, um... Toriyama originally intended for him to have blue hair, but I don't know how true that is, but I heard it was the opposite of Bulma. They originally intended Bulma to have purple hair, but I don't think it really matters because the anime is already established, you know, even if they, that is how it was supposed to be. Now, in the original Dragon Ball Z, there is a, a telling of Trunks, Gohan, and Bulma in the future with the androids where the androids have wiped everything out. And they kill Gohan, and Bulma builds a time machine for Trunks to go back. And that's, in a sense, what starts the Cell game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's kind of like a kind of a continuation. Like, Super kind of continues off of that Trunks, you know? Oh. I that... mean, not, you know what I mean? Like, the arc does, not the whole, you know, not the whole series, but the arc does. Right. But yeah, now there's, like, an evil version of Goku, and there's this, um... Kai that wants to destroy all of humanity. <laughs> Holy shit. How he does and how he does is really complicated. Like Goku Black is actually Zamasu from another universe, but he like made a wish from the, the Super Dragon Balls, which are like planet sized. That's kinda of why it's called that. And yeah, one of them is actually him, but he switched bodies with Goku and while he's after he switched bodies with Goku he killed um Goten and Chi Chi, which it's really weird because they just stood there and let him kill them. I don't really get that. Was Chi Chi at least yelling at him? Oh no, they were like cowering in fear. It was really weird. <laughs> That's the way a second. That's not Chi Chi. She would be bit. She would be cutting the promo. Maybe it's because of a different timeline. I don't know, but 
Oh, yeah, though, I don't know. It seems like she'd be the same like everyone, like, you know. <laughs> Um, oh, shit. Actually, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting when, after that happened, like, when she, when, when present, when, when, you know, the main Goku's, Chi Chi finds out, she was only concerned about him killing Goten, she's all like, he killed Goten, how, what kind of father are you not stopping him, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. If they if they do another live action movie, do you think they're just going off a of super, or are they just doing, are they completely rebooting it? You think? I think they'd probably completely reboot it. But see, the problem with that is I've noticed a pattern. A lot of people haven't watched the original series. Like, I kid you not, and I know I've probably complained about this a lot, but there's people. If you go on a review, uh, most of a review of um, Dragon Ball Evolution. There's people who don't know about King Piccolo, and even worse, there's people who don't know about Grandpa Gohan. Like, I've actually seen people say, like, that they screwed up by, by making his um, Gohan his grandpa. I was thinking, wow, are you kidding me? <laughs> and what's funny is, when I was going back and watching Dragon Ball Z, I was noticing every little, like, thing. They mention King, they do mention King Piccolo, they mention Grandpa Gohan. And something I never, honestly, Daniel, I never noticed before, they mentioned the truffles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah, I actually didn't, I hate to admit this, but for those that don't know, um, as you know, well, I mean, I mean this part's obvious. They censored Dragon Ball and Toonami, but, well, Dragon Ball Z, but they eventually released Dragon Ball Z uncut, and I actually didn't know about that until after they showed the uncut version. Oh, wow. So, so, it might have not been. It might have been some I missed, though. You know. <laughs> you don't miss too much, man. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. But yeah, I was kind of young when it first aired on Toonami, though. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're younger than me, so that's. I, I feel like I'm like the old timer in this discussion, but. <laughs> um, my thing of it is with Dragon Ball Z, when I was listening to that, they mentioned the, the the truffles. I was like, wow, that right there, there's GT, there's the connection. And I, I really enjoyed that, hearing that, because I, you know, it's like, my problem with, I'm sort of like a character, you know, I go off, a lot of this I go off of memory. But again, my memory isn't the best either, so... <laughs> See, the problem with, uh, I don't know if you know a lot of these canon people, but they basically say, like, anything that's not in the manga is in canon, which, but, you know, a lot of, some stuff in the anime is not, but, see, that's where it's kind of complicated, because then they see DBZ Kai is the canon version of DB, because it doesn't have filler. The thing is, Kai actually does have filler, it just doesn't have a lot, but it does have some stuff. In the Orange Brick DVDs, it does not have much fill it doesn't really have filler i mean they show the nudity and i think they even uh vegeta told goku to go to hell i mean like there's apparently scenes that aren't in the manga you know like, they call that filler but i guess filler makes more sense with your description to be honest but i think um from what i read every release after 2004 or 2005 i don't remember which one but after i think in 2004 all the releases after that are uncensored oh wow do you think they did that on purpose or no I think they might have um because I know they released it uncut but I think Funimation might have just gotten like just for, just decided to release it uncensored that way um well I want to say like less releases but now I think about it I think they want you to buy a bunch of releases because you notice like never release something wrong with it pretty much yeah is there any origin story you want to see done before, like, Super gets too far along? Um, that's actually a good question. Um, maybe they could do an origin of um, Grandpa Gohan. Because we never really heard of his, I mean, we heard some of stuff, like he was trained by Roshi, but we never really saw him tra train and all that stuff. 
I definitely wouldn't mind Grandpa Gohan. The the there's you know there's two I definitely want. One's one's I know they've got touched upon it with Kami and Piccolo. I definitely want to see the Namics, like the complete history. And I definitely want to see oh, yeah. I want to see Vegeta the the sort of like the origins of Frieza. Or Frieza's complete journey Plus, with told in with the kidnapping of Prince Vegeta, you know that's that's sort of something I want to see. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, I speak of Frieza. There's a question I want to ask you. Um, did you think he was a girl at first? Not really. I thought he was just. Here's the thing. I don't know how many people caught this. The person who voices the um. The the girl the uh the person with the um the ball who floats around with the ball I forget her name I think voices Frieza because they sound similar. Oh, I can see that. He's played by someone else in um Dragon Ball Super though. Oh wow. But no, I didn't think he was. I didn't think Frieza was a woman. I knew it was a man. Because they, here's the thing, I think it's Vegeta, I'm pretty sure, says him, him, you know, Vegeta, he destroyed planet Vegeta. Oh yeah, I think you're alright, but yeah, like, I thought he was a girl at first, and so did my brother, because like, if in fact, I remember when we found out he was a girl, my brother said, I mean, when we found out he was a guy, and um, my brother said, he's, um, that's a guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think with an like early animation like like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, I think the animators like literally messed with the audience on purpose. Like honestly, I think. Oh, I it. You know. <laughs> now you know there's still people who think he's a girl too. I know, I seen that in um, one of the Dragon Ball groups we're in. I don't know we're in like a couple of them, but. Where somebody like drew like a fake vagina or something. I was like, oh, come on now. Yeah. I know a lot. Some people say, like, I've actually seen some people try to say, like, I saw this one person, woman try to say, well, he's like, well, she's a woman, but, or a girl, whatever. And someone said, no, he's, his race is asexual, but that's never been confirmed. So I don't know where people got that from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What well, what were your thoughts on um, Frieza destroying Planet Vegeta? You know that's actually a good question. Um, I'd say it's actually kind of. Um, I'd say it's my thoughts would be like he was really bad and show us how evil he is because basically you know he they were they were obeying him then he murdered them. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat that? My son came in and I couldn't hear you. Oh, that's fine. I would say, like, I would say that, um, my response would be that it was pretty messed up, like, what he, he blew their plan up because it shows so evil he is because, you know, like, they had to be followed him, you know, and basically just for him to kill them all. Yeah. He, he was really just just I mean brutally evil and it was cold man my thing of it is going back and watching Dragon Ball Z now I still enjoy it it, it just makes me appreciate GT more I do wish they would have done a better job you know what I mean a better job with the movie the live action so what with with everything that's going on in Dragon Ball Super, what do you want them to? Do? I know it, it might be late because I know like they're like into deep into the season, but it's so, what's something you want them to do to maybe fix fix it a little bit? Um, I would say they should actually like focus on more characters. Like, and see that's something they could have done. See when the turn of power started, I think I may have told you this before, but in case I didn't. I think I did, but 
Well, you know, maybe people haven't heard it, but yeah, basically what they did is, see, Android 18, I mean, <laughs> excuse me, Android 17 has an island now. See, during the turn of power, they actually had Goten and Trunks and um, Marin, you know, watch the island. So a lot of people were thinking, oh, they're going to get a subplot, but it never happened. It's like they just kind of wrote them out of the show, you know. It was really weird. But I would say, like, focus on more characters, because now it seems like it's mostly, you know, focused on Vegeta and um, Goku, you know. Yeah. Do you think they're going to do anything to sort of, like, go away from them at all, or no? To be honest, I'm not sure, because, um, because, you know, they're popular characters, so I don't really know if they will or not. You know, I don't think they will, to be honest. You know how they are. Yeah, I know. They, that, that's sort of what gets me. I mean, I, again, I, it's, I know, like, <laughs> I remember when Dragon Ball Super first came on and my wife's like, are you going to watch? I said, I've just, and I was, I had just, you know, I thought about like watching. I'm like, no, I said, I'm after GT. I said, I'm good. I said, to me, GT was perfect. I said, I think Super is just going to be basically some sort of weird reboot. I said, and really it doesn't sound weird. It just sounds like normal Dragon Ball stuff. <laughs> explain this when you were asking me to describe it yeah there's these well i know i've mentioned them a little bit but yeah there's these thing dragon balls are called super dragon balls they're planet sized and basically when you you know call upon drag the dragon it's super shenron or shen you know obviously in japan super shenron but that's kind of irrelevant but yeah he grants you a rule free wish oh wow do they do the dragon balls do they have to refine them or no if they Oh, they, um, actually, it's weird. The first tournament was actually for, like, I think for some of them, or two of them, I don't remember, but for some reason, like, they were, for some reason, some of them were in Universe 6. I don't really understand that, because, I mean, I kind of get that. There's multiple universes, but it seems like either they would be in all of the universes, or they would be in one of them, you know? It doesn't seem like they'd be only in two of them, you know? Yeah, that's... That's interesting. Do, like, are there any... Like, what's the difference between, like, not necessarily Goku and Vegeta, but let's say, like, King Kai, like, and all of them. Or is there just a character they didn't include? Oh, uh, just didn't include? I, I, not that I can think of it on the bat, you know. Yeah. Um, let's say... Actually, it's weird. They're even doing weirder stuff. Like, Goten and Trunks are still short. Like, well, actually, to be honest, they look younger. But see, the thing is, Pan and um, Bola or Bra, as she's called in Japan, um, have been born already. So I don't really get that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and for some reason, Pan is younger than Bola. I mean, older than Bola. Sorry. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. She was born before Bola, which is really weird because in the end of Dragon Ball, I mean Dragon Ball Z, she didn't, she looked older, you know. Yeah. And GT actually got that right, well, we're wrong, I don't know, because, see that's the thing is, if you post a, for those that don't know, if you post a picture of the end of Dragon Ball Z, people will actually mistakenly think it's GT for some reason. <laughs> I think with, I don't know why people like pick on GT, <laughs> I don't, I think it's something you said, it's just, it's cool to hate GT, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, it's actually funny, I was about to mention that, remember when I said that to some guy and he got like annoyed, like he said, or it's because it was badly written or something like that, I remember his response, <laughs> yeah, people, people always try to respond that way to me, I don't care though. <laughs> I don't think it was badly written. It was... It, again, I was... I was... When GT was done, like, more things were fresh in my mind. Like, it was going off of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. And when GT came around, I was younger then and 
when I watched it, I was like, wow, they really did... GT, to me, and this is what sort of upsets me a little bit, is GT, even though, like, how it ended, it didn't feel like it was goodbye to the Dragon Ball franchise. Like, that's actually a good point, too. Like, I remember I thought there was going to be another show, but there never was, obviously. Well, you know, I know there's Kai, but Kai came out in 2010. Yeah. And that's just retelling of BBC. Anyway. Yeah. I think what Kai came on, what, Adult Swim? Actually, believe it or not, um, well, I actually thought Adult Swim now, but when it first came to America, it was put on Nicktoons and 4Kids, and as you probably guessed, they censored stuff. And 4Kids did a censor, that's actually a joke now, like, um, 4Kids decided to actually turn Mr. Popo blue. Oh, wow. Mr. Popo yeah, was not blue. Kai, but it was actually just that channel. Oh, good. <laughs> I said Mr. Popo is not blue. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, see, that thing is a lot of people blame Kai, but it was actually that particular channel that made that. Did it, you know. You think that censors just got a little too happy with censoring stuff and they just didn't know what they were censoring or what? I think it's because Mr. Popo is like a lot of people associate him with blackface which I could see the resemblance but I always thought more like he was a genie to be honest. I never thought he was human at all. He doesn't even here's the thing with Mr. Popo I don't even think Mr. Popo is from Earth. <laughs> yeah I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, he has big lips. I think they made his lips smaller in the, as well, but the manga too. But we in the U.S. release of the manga, I should say. I mean, cause I, that's what I said. I said I, when I first saw most Mr. Popo, it, it sort of reminds me of something Vegeta said when, when he like met Piccolo, and he said, "What you thought you were from this planet? What the the green skin and the big ears weren't a giveaway? <laughs> like, you know." <laughs> Like, I, that's sort of how I felt about Mr. Popo. It's like, you look like a genie. I don't I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying a genie can't be from Earth, but he could just, I mean, maybe he is. Here we go. Do origins of Mr. Popo. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another, I forgot to mention something about evolution. You, met, you reminded me because you said something about Piccolo. Not only do people not know about King Piccolo, I've actually seen people try to say Piccolo what, um, being bad is a mistake that Evolution made. I'm not kidding. It's like he was always, well, I mean, he was originally bad, even the even the one we know was bad originally. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was bad to the bone. I mean, Piccolo is one of my favorite characters, and I've, now I've jokingly said that, you know, Goku, yeah, Goku, little, little Goku murdered Piccolo, King Piccolo. No, he didn't. He he got, he avenged the death of Master Roshi, you know, and all that stuff. But Piccolo was an evil guy. Yeah, even with, like, a review of Evolution, I even saw someone straight up ask why Piccolo is a villain. I'm not kidding. I was thinking, where are these people coming from? Here's the thing, and here's what I've always found strange. I mean, there are people who just haven't heard of things, and, and Dragon Ball just maybe they were just told that Piccolo. Maybe they just watched Dragon Ball Z or later parts of Z and GT. I mean, some people just. I know this is hard to believe because I've watched Dra the original Dragon Ball, and I know you have, and I know you know there are just a big majority of Dragon Ball fans that have, but there are people who got into GT and Dragon Ball Z way later than what we did, so they just might have caught the tail end of it and mistook, mistakenly said, "Oh, he he was always good." I mean, that's character assumption is always one thing I see in many franchises. Oh yeah, I can see that. The one problem with evolution as well is some people mistakenly think it's a Dragon Ball Z adaptation, but it's actually a Dragon Ball adaptation. What's supposed to be, I should say. Yeah, Evo Daniel's right. Evolution is straight up Dragon Ball adaptation. It, I mean, it's based off the original series. I actually 
saw someone ask another question too. Like I saw someone ask why Goku doesn't turn Super Saiyan in Evolution. Here's the thing: he doesn't turn Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball, so. Yeah. <laughs> now this could be misleading because the DVD does call it the Z edition, but that's not. I don't know. I don't even know why they did it. To be honest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually quote my brother on this, and he even said with, with them calling it Evolution, you would have thought they would have did the Super Saiyan thing early. He said even though it would have been wrong, he said them calling it Evolution was misleading. Now see, one problem I also have with, yeah, that's true, but another problem I have with Evolution is they try to make things edgy too. Like, instead of Roshi living on an island, he lives in this weird house that... You know, it's in the city, but it kind of looks like it's on an island. It's like, why did you even make that change? Yeah, I, I really wish they wouldn't have changed, like, a lot of things around. I wish they would have give Bulma all blue hair and not just, like, a, a strip of blue hair. <laughs> but, yeah, evolution is dog shit for sure. I think I've asked you this before, but which do you think is worse? Well, I guess your opinion could change anyway, but... Which is worse, um, that or the Resident Evil movie? Well, here's the thing. There's more Resident Evil mo Well, do I have to just go by one movie or no? Oh, well, you know what? You don't have to because, you know, they're all pretty bad, to be honest. <laughs> Considering Resident Evil made more, I would say Resident Evil. At least, at least they only fucked up Dragon Ball once. Well, that's true. Oh, man, I wonder how many people are listening... I wonder how many fans of the Resident Evil movies are listening to Scott saying these fuckers are talking about Resident Evil again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, seriously. <laughs> my thing of it is, I, here's a funny story. I went to go see Resident Evil in theaters with my brother and my cousin. <laughs> and somebody, at, somebody in front of us said, what's Resident Evil? And they didn't know what it was. And I said, oh, it, it used to be a video game, and they turned it into a movie, just sort of like Super Mario, but this is about zombies and, like, and I, you know, all that. So, I mean, you did have people not knowing what it was at first, even though, like, it, again, I think it depends on age group. Did you play the game? Didn't you play the game? I've met people that haven't played Silent Hill. I mean, it just... And you have to explain what that is. Which Silent Hill was actually based oh, upon... Yeah, Silent Hill was based upon a real town here in Pennsylvania, so... Yeah, that's actually kind of cool, to be honest. I mean, I mean, I heard the town's creep. I mean, it's cool it's actually based on that town. And they actually take the real, like, the real reason... See, the game differs over the years. But the original game sort of got into the mythology of the the actual town and the movie got into the mythology of the Pennsylvania town they just although they based it in West Virginia in the movie but I mean it's kind of weird. no not really considering when you West Virginia is I would I if I had to pick where I'd film a movie West Virginia or PA I'd probably pick if I had to pick a where I'd film a Silent Hill movie I would choose West Virginia over PA in a heartbeat I, I've been down to West Virginia and it's creaky. Uh -huh. It like it, it's peaceful like countryside, but if you didn't know any better, it's it's creepy as shit at night. Actually, I could be wrong, but I think I'm wrong. Turn takes place in West Virginia. That's probably related to that. Yes, yes, it does. Takes <laughs> place in West Virginia. No, I've been to West Virginia, but to be honest, I've only I was there on a trip, you know. Um, but you know, it was different because you know, since it was, since it was our trip, as you guessed, we stayed among the city. You know, <laughs> I've been in the countryside and in the city. I mean, it's it's beautiful there. You know, like I've been to Morgantown and stuff, but and Morgantown's coal mining country. But West Virginia is a beautiful place, but there is something like creepy about it. I'll say, for for my money, though. The Resident Evil movies are worse. What say you? What's worse? Uh, yeah, I'd say you're right, actually. I'd say it's because it has more movies that's worse. 
I don't really know which one further strays from the source material, but like you said, it has more movies, so it really did more damage. Well, I know you didn't say more damage, but I'm saying that, you know. Do you think they could do a, like, Dragon Ball, like a mini-series, or... And I'm not sure, now you mention it, like... I think they could probably do it, but... You know, I don't know, they'll probably screw some up again. Do you, Would you like them to get... I know they've done, like, they mentioned the Dragon Balls, and they've done the origins of the... Sort of, like, they talked about the origins of the Dragon Ball... But would you like to see them like actually show the creation of the Dragon Ball, like do a like a an anime movie about them? Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool, actually. Like, I think they have mentioned how they were created, but you know, it'd be cool to actually see it either way, you know. Yeah, I'm with you. If 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 they told me tomorrow, oh, we're doing an animated movie about how the Dragon Balls were created, I'm I'm. I would pre or I would be begging my wife to pre order. <laughs> now I, I actually want to ask him about Dragon Ball Z. Like watching Dragon Ball Z now, do you feel like they were always kind of setting up Gohan to be the main character? Uh I'm gonna say no, honestly. And I'll I'll tell you why. A lot of the things even though I know Gohan gets scared. The way Gohan would get angry, it was like Incredible Hulk angry at times. And the way Gohan, they put Gohan over, I know I'm not at the Cell arc, but I know how Gohan goes over on Cell. I know I make fun of Saiyan Man, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? I know I've made fun of Saiyan Man jokingly, but I sort of, I sort of more appreciate Saiyan Man now than I did then, because... Of the whole, they were trying to cover up the fact of them having superpowers. I mean, that sort of fits in, but I do feel they took it too far to the joking side of it. Like they, like the other characters making fun of it. It just they were when they did Saiyan oh, Man. Yeah. When they did Saiyan Man, I would say that's sort of where they were sort of going toward back toward Goku, in my opinion. Actually, it's kind of interesting because in um, Dragon Ball Super, Saiyan Man um, gets a movie made about him. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like, yeah. you, probably, you probably guess Gohan decides to, like, play in it, but you know they think he's, like, just a stuntman pretty much because, you know, they don't know who he really is. <laughs> oh, shit. The, the, I mean, Dragon, here's the thing, you know this, Dragon Ball... It wasn't just Dragon Ball Z that could be quirky. Dragon Ball could be quirky too at times. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, actually, with the um, with Gohan being the main character, I will admit, like, I did start to see connections. Like, well, you know, like as I was telling you before, like he was supposed to become the main character in the Great Saiyan Man arc. But see, I actually watched it a few years later, and I realized that I thought, huh, I wonder if Gohan was always intended to be the main character because. I noticed, you know, they start fo they focused on him a little more, like, well, I mean, you know, like, you know, like, when he was a kid, they start, they focused on him, and, and, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but in Dragon Ball Z, he was shown before Goku was, but I know that doesn't really mean anything, but, for those that didn't hear, they just found a script of their Dragon Ball, and they said, well, the Dragon Ball Z, apparently it was going to be called Dragon Ball Gohan's Big Adventure Room, so it's kind of weird that I thought that, and then that script got discovered. Oh, wow. But I think you're right because, um, well, I mean, I know they, I think you're actually partially right too because I could see it both ways really because he didn't really become the main main character until the, um, you know, after he killed Cell and honestly they kind of, it kind of didn't work out very well, you know. Even like, like I'll go back to the Frieza arc, like, because that's before Cell. And it's like right before they do the the like the future trunks, you know, like trunks coming back sets up the cell arc. All right, they when he defeated Frieza, I felt right there. I said, "Man, that's really good." They put Go to me. That's where they finally put Goku official. I know Goku was put over prior to that. I'm not saying he wasn't, 
But Goku beating Frieza, to me, is where they fully put him over. Like, totally, totally put him over. Um, what I mean by, like, the Cell arc, where Gohan, when Gohan went over, I thought right there, I said, Gohan's now the future Dragon Ball Z. I thought what they were going to do with Goku, that some way, somehow, they were going to convince Goku to sort of do what Mr. Be like the new guardian of hell. Like, the, like um, take over for the guy who controls that situation. I forget his name now. think they just did that on purpose to sort of tease the audience oh yeah I could see that and actually here's a fun fact a lot of people don't know like see when Goku died in the cell arc he was actually supposed to stay dead <laughs> he, yeah him coming back was because like fans well Tor Toriyama said he didn't think Gohan fit you know fit as the main character ever but he claims he has had nothing to do with fans but fans complained about Gohan being the main character so coincidentally they brought him back. He brought him back. So, you know, but make the connection, you know, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't blame people for not getting there. Go ahead. Oh, I was actually just going to say, like, it actually was, um, Go Goten, how he looks like Goku. That's not a coincidence. That was actually related to that. Like, Goten was supposed to remind people of Goku, basically. Like, after he was gone. Like, he was supposed to recapture the magic of Kid Goku, you know. I could see that. I, I mean, I'm not really upset for fans for being fans of Goku. I mean, Goku's a great character for sure. I just feel... Uh, rely, it's sort of like I feel with other things. Don't rely on the same old characters. Build up your new ones. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, they could have easily done that, you know, with the other characters, you know, built them up. I think that would be a better idea, you know. Is there a character, like, I know you said Super is more about Vegeta and Goku, but is there a character, like, is there a character you just want them to, like, maybe, like, put over? Um, Gohan, to be honest, because he's like, you know, he's been there since the first episode of Dragon Ball Z. You know? yeah. So I think they could. I know they kind of did a little bit like where he got the um, Ultra Instinct back, or whatever. I'm mean, not Ultra Instinct, the um, the Mystic one. Yeah. Actually, I don't think that's the actual name, but yeah, the Mystic one. But yeah, I think that's would have been a cool time because maybe they could have been a second version of that, kind of like Super Saiyan 2, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm always in favor like if they again I'm a fan of Piccolo so I, I'm, they, to me they did just enough with him and here's the thing I think like Christopher Sabat voicing all those characters because let's be honest Christopher Sabat he voiced a lot of characters Yoncha, Piccolo, Vegeta and I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out like a ton more I know but I think Christopher Sabat voicing all those characters is why a lot of those characters ended up getting cut short because they just kept they kept relying on him a lot with voice because he was a good voice actor you know or still is but I do wish they would have did a little more with Piccolo and and a little bit more with Yoncha I do think they could good I was just going to say, I don't think he played them in the Japanese version, though. Oh, wow. I know he, like, on my, like, on my, uh, Dragon Ball, he's, like, voicing them. See, the thing is, though, like, with, like, how Sean Schimmel plays Goku, 
yeah. in the American version, he doesn't, he's not played by him in the Japanese version, he's played by some old lady. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Actually, it's weird, she plays Gohan and Goten as well. I think they... And I mean all ages, too. Oh, wow. Holy shit. So what do you um what do you think of this back to back Halloween stuff, man? Oh yeah, um I actually think it's kinda interesting. And for those that don't know, the rumor that they're both coming out next year is not true. Halloween ends is gonna come out in twenty twenty one. Yep. And Halloween Kills is coming out in two thousand twenty. Craziness. I I might see that. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm probably I might see them in theaters. I'm not 100 percent sure though. I think I already planned on seeing the next one, so probably you know. I'll be there with bells on for both of them, God willing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look, look, Piccolo. Believe it or not, Piccolo is a Kira Toriyama's favorite character too. I know that's. I never knew that till you told me that. And that's sort of making me happy because I, I really just enjoyed the character, even when he was bad. I always, you know I me, mean, man. I enjoy a good heel because a heel puts over the uh, the hero, and I really felt Piccolo put over Goku well, but Goku put over himself too. I always feel the mix of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z was really good. I I know people say GT is about Vegeta and Goku, but even prior to that, them going in the space, I did like the mix of him, Trunks, and Pan. And I know you've enjoyed it too. It just, I do wish we would have got a better live action movie, like way way better. <laughs> and I'm hoping, oh, yeah. I'm hoping like if they ever do another live action, which you would think, look, I know. Would you say Super is as popular as the original series? Um, you know that's actually a good question. Um. Um, I'm not sure. You know what? Maybe you know what I think it is. You know. Okay. Do you think that's going to be the series that gets? Because I know they redid Broly, um, the Broly movie. Do you think that Dragon Ball Super is going to be the series that gets a new live action movie that gets the franchise a new live action movie? Right. <laughs> oh, I'm sick of Piccolo. Um, you know how there's a joke about how <laughs> Piccolo is Gohan's dad? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one. Like, they they kind of reference that in Dragon Ball Super. Like, there's an episode where he's taking care of Pan. <laughs> Listen. Piccolo is a way better babysitter than Laurie Strode. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> I, I'm joking. So, how do you think the new movies, the new Halloween movies are? Um, oh, sorry. I don't. I'm going to do another video after we do this, after we wrap up this. My thing, and here's what I'll say too, is. I know Jason Blum, because I, I tagged you guys on this on Facebook, that I think the titles themselves, like Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, I'm not saying those aren't like the official titles, because they are, and I'm not saying how they're, that, you know, using air quotes that Halloween Ends isn't going to end, because we all know how that's going to go. There, there's going to be more Halloweens even after that. Whether Michael Myers gets killed or not, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You you know yeah, right, you. you know. I think the titles themselves are what I call water cooler talk. It's the titles are for us to sort of talk about and say, hey, where everything up till now was just rumor and speculation of are we you know are we getting two movies? 
well Jason Blum made that official we are getting two movies just ones next year and then ones the year after and I think the titles themselves are just us to talk about and discuss and kick around I I I think in my opinion both titles are going to end up getting changed before they come out one either one's getting changed or both is getting changed because I don't think they're going to stick with those titles see um I kind of think that too but see that's the thing is I thought like with Halloween 2018 they were going to change it too because I actually never imagined a, they would actually go with a sequel called Halloween you know right I, it, here's what I've noticed about that too and it's something you just said Halloween 2018 I think maybe something we're missing is the 2018 is supposed to be sort of the emphasis of this is a follow you like you know what I mean it's I know it's not called Halloween to like we know Halloween 2018 is Halloween 2 basically right so Halloween 2018 is basically the 2018 is supposed to in my opinion represents the two in some sort of weird way Stuff, so I wanted to ask, have you ever read any good um, Dragon Ball fan fiction? I'm waiting for you to write some, man, <laughs> before I read that. Um, I have not. I, I write, you know this, I write fan fiction, but I'll read fan fiction, too. Um, so, I have not read any good Dragon Ball fan fiction yet. I don't know if there's even any out there right now because I'm here's the thing I'm so busy with my own stuff like the only thing like I take time to read is when, when he gets it up is John Philip Betancourt's Dark Shadows blog um, he's been I've been following that for four years um, and it's really like I know you just like followed I don't, I've seen you follow the page you like the page it's really really good um, I've, I've often said Betancourt should write the next movie like when they if they do another Dark Shadows movie he should definitely get a crack at it he's his blog follows the 60s series like it it it's sort of like a follow up of it it's not his is it, it has some old characters but it has a ton of new characters as well Actually, it's funny, for those that don't know, like, we did another discussion, I think it was on his other channel, I actually talked about writing a fan fiction that follows up GT, and since, like Jewel said, he's, um, wait for me to write some, I'm announcing it right here, I'm going to start writing a G, well, an unofficial GT sequel, and Goten's gonna be the main character. That is very nice. Nice. I'm excited, it's man. Going to, I'm, I might, well, oh, thanks. I, I'm actually thinking about making it a little, you know, darker, a little dark too, you know. Here's nothing. I, here's the thing too. All the Dragon Balls that we've watched have elements of like, in a sense, horror. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. I was actually thinking about that too, because I was actually talking about thinking about rewriting Dragon Ball, like. Kind of like they do with Sabrina, but then I thought, you know what? Dragon Ball is actually kind of dark already, if you think about it. Yeah, it is, too. I'm, I'm excited, man. But yeah, that might be... I'm not... Okay. I'm sorry, I keep getting rocky. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. Go ahead. That's fine. Um, I, it might be in chapters, but I'm not personally sure. For those that don't know, I don't always write in chapters, but I do sometimes. It's, I know, it's kind of weird. Are you? Are you? I had a fan fiction of um, Psycho. Yeah, he. Yeah, Daniel did. It was really good, man. You you gonna put this on the Divine Art page or? You know, actually, I think I will put it on there because that's usually where I put stuff. To be honest, well, I mean, like stories. I you know there are writing websites, but I don't know. I'm not really familiar with the writing websites. And there's one called Fanfiction.net, which I've tried to use, but see, the thing is. Fanfiction.net, like, say you misspell a word. It doesn't even let you edit. You have to resubmit the story entirely. It's really weird. Oh, that wouldn't work for me. 
that's uh, I, I'd say that's one of my favorite things about using Microsoft Words. I can edit as I go along, and it'll let me know if I mess up. I, like I'm proud of my last day because I had no mess ups at all. So like, like when I when I re dropped "Who's Your Daddy" for my Dark Shadow story, and the reveal of Satan, I was like happy because I had no fuck ups. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Actually, there's some um, interesting fan fiction um, about Grandma Z, and there's this one, and I'm not trying to target the audience. I mean, the guy, the person who wrote it, but there was this person who wrote Dragon Ball Z in kindergarten. That was a cool idea, but they were like in romances and stuff. It was really weird. Mm, I could see that though too, because. I mean, Dragon Ball, I mean, I know that's, that's like, young, but Dragon Ball, I mean, Chi-Chi and Goku, when they got married, they were young. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> I know there's also these one story, it's, there's actually one, actually, to be honest, the ones I've read are pretty good, but there's this one common theme with Dragon Ball Z fan fiction where Gohan raises Goten. Oh, Wow. Yeah, um, yeah, of course, um, that could be based on a real problem, I hate to say it. I'm not saying who write, people write that are, have a problem, because I've actually read some, and they were actually good, but, see, the problem is, I don't know if you know this, there's people who mistakenly think Goten is Gohan's son. Yeah, and he's not, uh... So. Yeah, I even saw this one clip where someone asked why Go, Goten referred to his mom as grandma. I mean, his grandma is mom. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> like, what the hell? Here's the thing, too. Sometimes, with, like, I know when, like, doing fan fiction, the hardest thing to do is stay within your own continuity. Like, that's the one thing I did not want to do with mine is leave my own continuity. It, my, the John Philip Betancourt asked me what was the... I was talking to him and I said, dude, the hardest thing for me with this was like coming back to do Dark Shadows, like follow up on my 66 page story with this was not revealing Satan too soon. And so I did things, teased him, like teased him appearing that he's going to appear, he's going to appear, he's doing this, he's doing this each and every day that Kiki came back to Collinwood. So... I think that the one thing you got to do fan fiction, if I could give any advice to Dragon Ball writers, is stay within continuity. Like, try to make sense of what you're saying. I mean, it's it's not always the most fun, but it'll be the most rewarding when you get stuff right with your own characters. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, oh, yeah, with these stories, like, how they do that is they say, like, you know, Chi-Chi died when Goten was little, you know? Oh, wow. Wait, wait, did she die giving birth? Yeah. Oh, no, I, this isn't mine. I mean, like, this is, like, a Faro. Like, actually, there was one that said that. One said that she died giving birth, but then another writer said, like, she tripped and died. I don't know why they did that, you know? Oh, wow. That's... Holy shit. Now, with my, now actually, there is some info I forgot to mention in my story. Like, and, and like I said, I, I don't think a lot of people heard this discussion because it was on your other channel, but... My, fan, my GT fanfiction follow-up will also... Goten will have a son in this continuity. Nice. And also his, um... You know that... You know his girlfriend in GT? I'm gonna have him marry her. Okay. I know... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, um... If you, were, if you remember when she thought that he was super-powered, she thought it was awesome, you know? She wasn't, like, afraid of it or anything. Yeah, she was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I remember her, yeah, I remember her reaction, too. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, but, but yeah, like, I, yeah, my story is not going to be one that I mentioned. However, I'm not against it, because, see, I, it's, it's kind of, the only problem I have with the Gohan Race Goten story is, I mean, um, thing is, that I think a lot of people are, I think the whole con 
concept is based on that misconception that Goten is Gohan's son, you know? I, you know, if, if you're going to have, like, a brother raising up, like, raises, you know, raise his brother, it, there's nothing wrong with that, you know what I mean? But, again, continuity is always the hard thing to stay within bounds. So, it just, it, it again, I'm not, it, I'll never claim to be a perfect writer, I'm not, by no means, but I've always tried to stay within the frame of continuity. And I, you know, again, um, I'm not going to knock anyone's story, but just if you're going to, if the, if there are those out there listening to me, what I'll say is, look look at what you're writing from a character aspect. If Gohan is somehow Gotan's son, okay, if you want to change that, I'm not saying I'm against that, that's fine, but don't have Chi-Chi involved somehow. Have another woman involved, obviously. Oh yeah, that's true. Like, but see, the, the ones I wrote, I mean, read, I mean, I can't, I can't believe I just said that. The ones that I read, they basically said that, you know, Chi-Chi died. Well, I know I already mentioned that, but, um, see, the problem with that is, like, Gohan was, um, canon-wise, he was actually, like, 9 or 10 when Gohan was born. I know people say, well, Piccolo said he was a scared 11-year-old. Okay, people need to realize, that was not said in the Japanese version. Yeah. In the Japanese version, he's 9. Oh, wow. Now, actually, what's really weird about that is, if you really think about it, that doesn't mean anything anyway. Maybe Piccolo guessed his age wrong, you know? Well, Piccolo can, like, sense ability, too, so maybe he just knew his age. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's kind of weird, I know, but, it, I mean, even if you go by 11, it's still weird, but, yeah. yeah. Now, there is one writer. I'm not going to say who, because you never know. They might be listening, but there's one writer that actually made Gohan, like, 23, but for some reason turned made Goten 5. I know, it's really weird. He made Gohan older, but Goten younger. Um, that just might be care like they're trying to set, have better separation of a character, or do something different. I mean, all writers do something different with character aspects. Like, I know they did. I, I, I know they did say like it was so like it could be taken away or something. I don't even. I don't even know. If, I don't know. Sixteen in Japan. I don't know if they can have custody. I know they can other things you know right i mean it's care i think again many writers i think just try to make characters their own i mean and that's when when you're writing what someone else created that's always my fear with like dan curtis's characters like i don't want them to be completely what dan curtis created because that that's something he did and that's always something I don't want to do. While, yeah, I want Quentin to be charming and fun, I also want Quentin to be his own person. And I tried to portray that with mine. Same thing with Barnabas. It, it's it's always tricky when you're dealing with someone else's characters. Oh, to be honest, I might kind of do the, my fan fiction. Because I know it's a continuation of GT, but I was thinking, you know, Goten acting mature, you know, after having it. I can see that, man. I'll definitely read it when you get it, get it up for sure. I I know like you're really good at this stuff. So, is there anything you want to add before oh, we thanks. sign? Is there anything you want to add before we sign oh, off sorry. here? Oh, sorry. Oh, I actually thought of another fanfiction I did too. Like, this is kind of just something I ran. This one might not happen. So, so don't be. So people listening, don't be disappointed if this one never comes out. But. I thought about doing a high school one where, you know, like, with mixed characters with, like, Leon, Goku, and, you know, other people, and, like, having Vince McMahon as the principal. <laughs> You're doing a mixed worlds. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. I'm not sure, though, because... Actually, I haven't thought about referencing evolution. Like, Goku appears and, like, have, like, Chris Redfield or someone say... Didn't they already try that with some movie and, and Goku saying, we don't talk about that? <laughs> yeah, do like a parody of it, yeah. That would be funny. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Uh, so what do you got coming up on your channel, man? Uh, I'm probably gonna finish the um. Well, I do the um Nightmare on Elm Street reviews, and I gotta finish those. And the um Friday Thirteenth reviews. I might also do the Friday Thirteenth series. I actually have it, but I haven't watched it yet. I know it's probably a little weird, but yeah. I might also review um. Resident Evil 2. I know we already kind of reviewed that, but I might do one on my channel as well. I know it might seem a little weird. Nah, not really. I. I thought about doing like an individual review myself, but it's like I'm so busy. Like I just, I, I just, with really, like I'm going like in I'm into the past with Angelique and shit. Like I can't. I'm trying to get reviews like what reviews I can for my channel like right now, and it's just like. Oh yeah, makes sense. Like you know what I mean? Days run together and shit. So, but. Um, oh yeah. Life's crazy, you know this. Um, <laughs> I want to thank Daniel Culver for joining me. Uh, if you want to hit Daniel up at Killenberg on Twitter, I'm going to leave a link in the description box to his channel, Killenberg. Uh, get definitely go check him out. Uh, knows a ton of Dragon Ball Z, Resident Evil. He reviews horror a lot um, as well. Um, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome, man. Bye.